and you're welcome back to another exciting edition of The Q. And I have to say, I am very excited about today's edition. My yeah. name is Jonathan. And I'm Kira. And for the next 30 minutes, we will bring you a show packed to the brim with current affairs, entertainment and lifestyle all in your Fingal area. Yeah, it's an absolutely jam-packed show. And we were out visiting the Irish pentathlon team as they trained for the 2012 Olympics. Our reporter Ashling popped along to the Millbank Theatre in Rush to check out the Rush Dramatic Society's production of the Playboy of the Western World. But first up, are you sick of those long journeys home on the night link yep. after a night out in town? I sure am. Well, fear not, because we're taking a step back in time and we're going to look at boogie nights at the Light Nightclub in Blanchestown. And our reporter Jennifer Drennan went out to look at how local nightclubs are at the weekend. Brilliant. <laughs> Tonight, FCTV have been invited to Light Nightclub in Blanchardstown. We're going behind the scenes to show you the newly refurbished venue and their first event of 2010, Throwback to the 70s. We're talking big hair, bold colours and live performances you don't want to miss. It's all about 70s theme, so lots of colour and lots of glam and glitz and just basically everyone having a good time, relaxing and enjoying themselves. And what is it about Light Nightclub that makes it different from other nightclubs in the area? Well, it's a new nightclub. We actually launched in October there of last year, so um, it's just really a place that everyone can go. It's for all ages, really. Tonight's event is the first of 2010. What do you think Light Nightclub will offer for 2010? We've always been one of the leading clubs. We've always done theme nights. This is only the third week in January and already we're having a theme night. We'll probably have a white party this year. We've always had a beach party. That's always been huge. You have so many different sections. You've got your cocktail bars, you've got your lounge area. Like, you know, is it kind of an exclusive uh, area in the nightclub itself? No, we don't do that because we think that everybody should be given the chance to go around the whole club and to experience the whole club. We're here in Light Night Club and tonight we are talking to... Aaron. Lana. Danielle. Brian. Peony. And they are Stiletto Creative. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, basically we're a group of dancers, 32 of us in total. We see all start came from different backgrounds. We all competed, took dance classes for many, many years. Everybody brings their own personality into everything that we do. <laughs> We're also fully trained with fire performing. We do snake charming. Wow. A bit of everything we can do. Guys, you were amazing. Did you really enjoy yourselves out there? Yeah, we had an absolute ball. Uh, did you put that routine all together on your own? Yeah, with yeah. the help of myself and Alana, we've put it all together. That was amazing. Well done. And you're going to enjoy yourself for the rest of the night. Are you going to go out and have a dance in night nightclub? Um, I think we might. <laughs> January Blues? Yeah, right. We've just shown you a nightclub that not only offers promotions and event nights, but also amazing atmosphere and great fun. Make sure to check it out. We've shown you the inside scoop. Now it's your turn. Next up, Jonathan went along to meet the Irish pentathlon team, two of which are native Fingolians, at their training camp while they prepare for the 2012 Olympics. Let's see what Jonathan got up to. Now, joining me here on these giant rubber inflatable balls is two of the elite athletes. We've got Tal and Aina. Tal? Yeah. How are things? <laughs> yeah, good, right. So, you are an elite athlete. How long have you been training? Um, I suppose I've been doing this for like three or four years now. So, uh, training hard for like the last year, year and a half. What about yourself, Aina? Um, I've been doing it for like five years, I suppose. And doing pretty intense training for the last two years. You, uh, was it, you won a silver in the Swiss Games? Swiss Open. Yeah. Swiss Open. Yeah. How was that? It was good, it was a nice experience. Yeah. 
been here since July and I've set up a high performance program um, geared around our elite athletes which you can see behind me um, and some development athletes trying to push them to qualify for the Olympics in 2012. Um, we've, we've presented our case to the Irish Sports Council and they're very impressed and um, we're hoping to hear if we're going to get some funding. London's what, two and a half years away. It, it, it is close but at the same time um, these guys have, have, have got something special going on here. To see the guys running around the track and some of them have got great technique and, and I tell you what it's, it's all about having guts as well and seeing them training and pushing themselves it's really impressive. I just think you can see some really exciting steps for them because the Olympic champion in 2000 was someone called Stephanie Cook and she um, took up the sport seriously two years before that. So within two years she went from really just dabbling in the sport to being Olympic champion. Yeah, I have to admit I really enjoyed the day so best of luck with the training lads. Now we're out at the Millbank Theatre in Rush where our reporter Ashlyn caught up with the cast and crew of the Rush Dramatic Society's production of The Playboy of the Western World. Now let's see how Ashlyn got on on the opening night of the play. Hi, I am back in the Millbank Theatre to meet with the Rush Dramatic Society about their exciting new production of The Playboy of the Western World. We'll be meeting with their director, Sean Corcoran. We'll be getting behind the scenes with one of the cast members and also meeting with the set design crew who built all of this. If you haven't seen the play, in short, it does centre around a character, Christy Matten, an apparent parasite who sets off into the west of Ireland to tell the locals about his recent exploits. But soon enough, his dead father arrives on the scene to burst his bubble. I've already said too much, so you're going to have to get down here to the Millbank Theatre to check out their production of the Playboy of the Western World. When the play was first performed in the Abbey Theatre in 1907, it caused apparent uproar. The politicians and the general public were describing it as inhumane, immoral and vile. Well, despite this controversial, it has toured the world for the last hundred years and Ireland and has been hugely successful. Um, it probably was back in 1907 when it went on. Um, it's unlikely there's going to be riots here at the Millbank this time <laughs> around. Hopefully um, there might be, but uh, it's good for publicity. But um, it's, I think it goes hand in hand with the fact that I think the Playboy is misunderstood. Um, it's a very complex play. It's as complex as any of the Greek classics. It's as complex as Shakespeare. But I think when they saw it first, they thought it was very stage Irishy and a bad representation of people in the West of Ireland, um, which is not what Singh was about. Um, they, they did react to some words in it which they thought were vulgar and um, very sort of um, crude at the time, which they wouldn't be obviously nowadays. But um, I think it was more of a misunderstanding that he, they thought that the people in the West of Ireland, they thought that Irish people were being portrayed in a very bad light. And it's not the case, and that's what we've hoped to try and do with this production, is, is, is show the reality of it. You know? People think that the Playboy is a melodrama, but it's not. It's a very realistic play, a really, really strong drama. Um, I've been a member of the Millbank here for a long time, but um, uh, I've been teaching thing for, for, again, a few years now, but to actually get out of the classroom and, and put it into performance has been a great experience and a wonderful cast and a great, a great director as well. So. Um, we're also working with uh, students from Kalosh and Dulig mm -hmm. who have designed the set for us. Uh, we met with them, had some um, pre-meetings with them before we got into rehearsal, and we came up with a concept and they've designed it and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's been a great, a great venture altogether, you know. Great stuff. Come following me. So I'm here with Patrona, she's a student from Klosh de Dulig Interior Design Course. Hi Patrona. Hi Ashlyn, delighted you're here. Thank you. So tell us how you got from the initial idea to this stage here. 
the drama had several plays um, coming up this year and Sean suggested this one for us. So we had several meetings with Sean and the main thing is to get everything historically correct. And we had lots of meetings to see how rural Ireland would have been, how downtrodden these people would have been, the clothes they would have worn. So we then had to go away and read our script and really set about creating the whole thing from scratch. Well, I've just been to see the Rush Dramatic Society production of the Playboy of the Western World. Some really nice performances in there, so make sure you get down to it. It runs until the 20th of February, every Wednesday to Saturday. And also, as Sean mentioned, there is some pre-show discussions. So all you Leaving Search students out there, make sure you get down. It may get you an A in your English. <coughs> Thanks for that, Ashling. Now, coming up after the Fingal Events Guide, we'll be out at the opening of the Balbriggan Youth Club, an event that was attended by the very glamorous Mrs. Mary McAleese. Oh, lovely. And some sporting eye candy pop into us here in the studio. The lads from Sporting Fingal are here, along with a performance from young Scary's R&B artist, Rob. All this after your Fingal Events Guide. <laughs> And now we're back in front of the widescreen, so you know it is time for your Fingal event guide. Yes, coming up in your area this week, X Factor Phenomenon Jedward are playing in the Helix. They're putting on two shows, one at 4pm and one at 7.30pm. Tickets for that are €25 Euro, and I'm sure it's going to be an unmissable show. It definitely is. You know, I'm Jedward's biggest fan. You are. Is You've that, is that got weird? a bit of thing going on with your hair there, yeah. You're building it up. Yeah, I'm going to dye it blonde now the next day as well. <laughs> wow. Um, the PTA or the Parent Teachers Association at Donaghy's Community School are having an evening with Paul Harrington. He is 1994 Eurovision Song Contest winner for Rock and Roll Kids. It's going to be a great night. It's at the Hilton Hotel on the Malahide Road. Tickets are 15 euro and it's on Thursday the 15th of April. So Excellent. I'd recommend even for past or present students go out there, mingle. It's going to be a bit of crack. Yeah. Have a nice, enjoyable evening. Now, next up, Young, Green and Gifted. They're a trio comedy act and apparently the best value comedy act in Ireland. They're playing in Dreacht in Blanchardstown. Show starts at 8.15pm on the 16th of April and tickets for that are €10. Euro. Sweet deal. Yeah. Uh, on the 16th is a Friday, so that's if you went to Paul Harrington and you're not too hungover or anything, then on the 16th you can go out to the Seamus Ennis Cultural Centre because Cathy Davies is going to be there and I have to admit I'm a massive fan and she's kind of easy on the eye as well. Oh which right, helps. okay. So tickets are only 20 euro, show starts at half eight, doors open at half seven, so it's going to be good crack. So that's it folks, that's what's happening, happening in your area from the queue at FCTV. Now, next up, the lads from Sporting Fingal are here, a nice treat for any of you sporting fans. Now, joining us in studio are Liam Buckley, manager of Sporting Fingal, their head coach John Devine and one of their wonderfully talented players, Conan Byrne. Welcome to the studio guys, thanks Thank for coming in to us. Thank you. Um, can you tell me now, are you the first Irish team to have moved up the ranks so quickly? I mean, you just founded, what, 2008? Um, as you say, we were founded in 2008. We initially applied for the A Championship, which is a tour tier okay. uh, division. Um, we got through that without kicking the ball because unfortunately Kilkenny City we're in financial difficulty. Oh we right. got offered, offered the opportunity, which we took. Um, we played in the first division. Our first season, we finished toured. And uh, just a season gone by, we finished toured again and we got promoted to the playoff system. So that puts us in the Premier Division. Conan, how are things? Not too bad yourself. Now, you were voted the 2008 Sport and Fingal Supporters Player. And you won it for UCD, of course, the year before as well. What sort of a relationship do you have with the fans? Um, I have a good rapport with the fans. Um, I still do with with, UC, with at UCD. I, um, tremendous respect for, for, for UCD as well. Um, considering that they brought me into the League of Ireland and gave me the opportunity to play uh, in the League of Ireland, so I even scored against them last year and didn't celebrate. So <laughs> nice. Um, it's that just a bit of respect for them that I think that every player should give to their previous clubs for giving them the opportunity to play. Um, but yeah, I had a great rapport with the, with the UCD fans. But at the moment you now it's. Um, a good one with the Sport and Fingal ones. Um, it might help that I'm in regular contact with them um, through my role as community development manager at the club. So, yeah. Um, but it's great. Yeah, Sport yeah. are fantastic. Yeah, because you are the community development manager. Can you tell us a bit more about your role and how you get involved with the community? Yeah, um, we do various initiatives within the community of Fingal. Um, at the moment, we're going visiting every school with the FAI Cup. So basically, you go into a school, bring the cup with us, and three or four players go, go in and answer any questions the kids have. 
um, about the club, about the professional lives of the players, or any questions really at all. We also do coaching courses in schools, nutrition talks, show um, anti-racism talks, um, and all the players are, are qualified in, in doing them in doing them talks. So it's uh, it's great for the players to be able to go into the schools and, and, and give something back because it's also the community at the yeah. Um, and there's other initiatives. We set up a special, uh, sport, um, a special Olympic soccer team, yeah. um, the first League of Ireland club to do so. A pair of wheelchair team is just basically wheelchair football. And um, I embarked on a charity aid mission to Zambia at the end of last year as well, which was um, I brought over four students and, and two teachers to, to work with um, physical and mental disabilities of children. And um, that was a tremendous experience for everyone involved. And we raised about 30,000 euros. So that's just some of the work. Definitely. John. But you started off in Arsenal and you were an academy player over there and you played with a, a lot of Irish people like Dave O'Leary. It would have been David O'Leary, Frank Stapleton, oh, Frank Stapleton. You know, Liam Brady and mm -hmm. myself. We would have been in around 74, 75, a long time ago. And uh, not unlike the Man United team at the moment, there was about seven players. There was three Northern Ireland players as well, Pat Jennings, Sammy Nelson and Pat Rice. So there would have been seven Irish internationals in that squad and we would have grown together and uh, we reached a few cup finals together so it was a very yeah. good time. In light of the sporting scandals with Tiger Woods and Ashley Cole, do you think that Irish sportsmen are more trustworthy? You look at the people you've mentioned there, it's such a, a you know, they're living in a goldfish bowl at the moment. Every movement they make, it's very difficult. Your private life is very exposed to the media mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. and they have a huge influence on you. So it's very difficult to have a private life. Yeah. But I don't think, um, the Irish press or media are as mercenary as the English and, well, the British, should I yeah. say. Yeah. And so I think they have a better chance of just living quite a normal life. But it's a very difficult situation to be in at that level. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yeah. Well, it's been great sitting beside such legendary football players. Thanks, lads. Um, thanks for coming in to us. It's thanks been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. And now we're out to Balbriggan with Karen Yarig, and she was at the recent opening of the Balbriggan Youth Club, an event that was attended by President Mary McAleese. They've been so excited, I have to say, in the past couple of weeks. Any time we mentioned her name, it was like, and she's coming to see us. And I'm going, yes, to see you. She wants to meet you. She wants to talk. Can I shake her hand? Yeah. One of the young fellas was like, I want to ask her out. I was like, good luck with that. <laughs> We're here in Balbriggan today as the Balbriggan Youth Service launches its new building and welcomes President Mary McAleese to the official launch. So we're here with Moira Garland, she's the chairperson of the Balbriggan Advisory Committee. So Moira, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Balbriggan Youth Club? Well, Cara, we started up in, back in 91. It was a number of parents in Balbriggan. We came together because we were looking for something for our young people to do. And can you tell us a little bit about what's going to happen today? Well, today's opening is the relaunch of the project, which is brilliant. It was always our dream to have a professional project for the young people of Balbriggan. And last year we went into partnership with Froiga, the national organisation. So today now we're lucky enough to see the launch of this project. So we're here with Glenn and Yulia who are both on the Balbriggan Youth Committee. So Glenn and Yulia, what are your favourite things to do here at the club? Well, my favourite thing is to come here and actually learn how to play guitar because it's actually really enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, mine is probably the same and playing pool. I would now like to invite our guest of honour, Mary McAleese, President of Ireland, to the podium. Despite all the bad news that's around, you're in good form, aren't you? Because you're doing something really positive, aren't you, here? You're investing in yourselves here, all the young people. That's what you're doing, investing in yourselves. My favourite thing about the youth club is why like, you feel free and like there's no one hassling you. And it's like just all good. We hear at Derville Comiskey and Sharon Comiskey, who are the Senior Youth Officer for Balbriggan and the Youth Officer for Balbriggan, respectively. Ladies, can you tell me a little bit about what happens here at the club? 
Well, all the young people come in after school because it is an after school service. So from three o'clock right up until 10 o'clock every day, something different is happening. So no, never one day is the same with the young people. There's no rules like for, you know, it's for certain young people. It's open to everybody. When you get the chance for your ideas to be listened to, they have the opportunity to really flood other people's imaginations. You have the opportunity to make things happen your way. Well, we have meetings every Friday and we come here and we discuss about stuff that we should do more often. What should we organise for other teenagers? We organised a Halloween festival there just there in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, that was good. Me and Lara was emceeing on it. It was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> we hear at Monica Harford, she's the Deputy Mayor of Fingal. Monica, can you tell us what the benefits of the youth club are for the youth of Balbriggan? I think the best thing about it is that it provides a facility where the youth can come in off the street. So hopefully the word will get around and it will um, just flourish. We'll have a ball here. It's for you. It's to make your lives the best they can be. You'll bring out the very best in yourselves. So enjoy doing it, have fun doing it, and make friends doing it. Garamila Mahigan. Now, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for on another great edition of The Queue. Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's been very emotional, to be honest. Do you think? Yeah, but it's emotional in a good way. <laughs> yeah, in a good I, way. No, I'm happy. <laughs> anyway, if you've been affected by any of today's issues raised in the show, remember you can contact us at info at fctv.ie and remember to tell all those family members, cousins, nephews, nieces, godchildren, grannies, dogs, aunties, anyone you want, tell them they can tune in to us at fctv.ie forward slash the Q. Now, playing us out today is another of Fingal's finest talents. At 22 years of age, he has recorded and engineered his very first EP, Sleepless. The EP was mastered by legendary LA engineer Bob Katz. Welcome to the studio, Rob. Thank you. So tell me, how did you go about engineering and recording your own EP? Well, I was interested in music at a very, very early age, 12. Um, wow. <laughs> and uh, I started sound engineering in uh, college. I uh, just blended the two, the creative aspects and the techno aspects, and I made a, a project. Excellent. Nice, because there's, there's quite a haunting sound to some of the beats in your songs and that. Is there uh, any particular influences you have? Uh, well, I take it from my own day-to-day -day life. Uh, whatever I'm going through at any period of time, I write about it. Uh, love, hate, anger, happiness, whatever. Because there's a lot of passion and pain that comes through in your song now, you know. Is there anyone in particular you... Yeah. Well, that would, that, the idea of that song was uh, to kind of unload on a woman who uh, didn't know that I liked them. Okay. <laughs> and um, I just kind of let them know that I do, and now she knows. Now she yeah. knows. Bad. Well, uh, I generally stalk them in the submission, <laughs> but uh, I like your method that too. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd go with yours. <laughs> um, so tell me, how do you go about distributing your stuff? Um, well, at the moment, I'm online at robrecords.com and okay. Facebook and Bebo and all the other social sites. Um, and now I see TV, you know. Excellent. Yep. Now, and tell me, Bob Katz, how did you get in contact with him or why did you? Um, in college, we all knew about Bob Katz. He's very renowned and uh, famous, famous okay. man. And uh, I have heard his work before on commercial CDs and I just thought I'd chance my arm at contacting him and he heard my CD and he, he liked it and he thought it was up to the best production he's ever heard in rap and hip hop. Wow, well, it's a very inspirational story. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you're going to play Now You Know for us. I am, yeah. Excellent. Take it away there, Rob. Thank you.
I will never get fully used to this But how could I ever miss something that could not exist It never was, never is, or never will be It's just a funny dream that means way too much to me It's just a fantasy that I never planned to see It just happened casually and left me a casualty With my head wide open and my mind strung tight My thoughts die broken cause my hands won't write That's Can you see it in my eyes? Can you hear it in my voice? my mind to you and I really want to let my feelings flow but when the words come I'm biting my tongue cause there's some things I just can't say cause the things about you I'm afraid to show and now you know, and now you know how much you really mean to me and that you seem to be the only reason why I'm breathing on the track you're the reason why I rap I don't do it for the claps, I just do it for the smile that I wanna give you back Cause you brought me so much, your pretty eyes have left me touched They told the most beautiful story, but just only in a rush Your gorgeous face has left me days, the perfect paradise you traced You bring dreams to all my nights and you're the music to my days Can you see it in my eyes? Can you hear it in my voice? I'm feeling I don't have a choice I'm gonna have to let you in I'm gonna have to let you in Can you try to understand that this is hard? Exactly what I'm thinking when I'm dreaming I just wanna hold your hand even though I know I can't You're the corners of my smile, you're the center of my style It is all a lot of work but you make it so worthwhile Cause these lyrics don't come easy and these songs are getting cheesy But these feelings just won't leave me and I'm hoping you believe me When I tell you that I tried to keep all these thoughts inside And so for the sake of pride I'm hoping that they subside Can you see it in my eyes? Can you hear it in my voice?